when you read the Bible, you have to place things in context. Many times what you are reading is one piece of a larger message. So you can't formulate a conclusion when you are only receiving one piece of a message. So you can't just look at what you are reading and say, hey, this must be all to it. That's it. No, sometimes you have to look in other areas in the Bible to understand what you are reading in that section. I pray that makes sense. Let's go to Matthew 18 and 19, a Bible gateway. No. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Expanded Bible. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So, what this is saying, let's say that you have cancer and you want to be healed from cancer. So, you say to yourself, well, from what Matthew 18 and 19 saying, hey, let me find some other people that I can pray with and have them agree with me that, hey, they want me healed. And from what this scripture is saying, if they agree with me and we all are praying about the same thing, from what this is saying, it shall be done. So in other words, if you get with other people and pray about certain issues and you all are agreeing on what you are praying about, from what this is saying, it shall be done. So if you just read it for what it is right there, this sounds like anyone. If anyone prays to God and pray with other people, what they are praying for is going to happen. This is why I am telling you to place things in context. This covenant promise is for people who are consistently serving God, people who are obedient to God. So if you are in consistent, willful, purposely sinning, this is not for you because you are not serving God, you are serving yourself. And you may say, well, from what this is saying, Kevin, it does not say that. This says anyone. It does not say that I have to serve God and stuff like that. Okay, let's go to John 15 and 7. Okay. If ye abide in me, so what does it mean by abiding in God? <laughs> Following his rules and regulations. Okay, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, so what does God's words abiding in you? Pretty much the same thing. You are following God's rules and regulations. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So, in other words, if you are following my rules and regulations, you can ask for what you want and it shall be given or done unto you. You will get what you are praying for. And you may say, whatever, Kevin, that is impossible. You are saying whatever I want as long as what you are praying for is not sinful. And you may say, well, that seems unbelievable. I don't believe God is going to give us the things that we want and stuff like that. Okay, how do you receive the covenant promises of God? Give me a second, please. How do you receive the covenant promise of the covenant promises of God? Okay through your obedience and your faith in him. So if you don't believe that 
this scripture is saying what it is saying or <clears throat> it is not true it is not going to work for you when you repent of your sins if you believe that God has not forgiven you of your sins then your your repentance is not in faith so I believe that it is not going to work for you everything must be done in faith if you are not doing it in faith and not believing that God is going to do what he says that he is going to do it is not going to work for you so the way that you receive his covenant promises is by faith and obedience so in Matthew 18 and 19 is for people who are obeying God if you are not obeying God this is not for you you can pray all you want but as you know God is God is not going to consider a sinner's prayer unless they repent first he is not going to now God is going to hear everything but he is not going to consider your prayer until you repent God please forgive me of all my sins that is how you repent you can't ask while you are in sin God please help me stop doing drugs or yes God please help me stop doing wrong but you have not repented yet does that make any sense let me show you because you all may think I am playing around and stuff. Uh, let's hear. Pops right up. John 9 and 31. Okay, now we know that God heareth not sinners. <laughs> but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth there you go so you have to repent of your sins then pray this is what I teach people before you pray even if you believe that you have done nothing wrong what you need to do is pray anyway no what you have to do is repent anyways myself even if I believe I did nothing wrong all day, I am going to repent multiple times anyways because I want to make sure that my prayers are being considered. I don't want to waste time. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. So when you praying as a sinner, God is not hearing you or considering your prayer. So you have to repent first. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So he hears you after you repent and obey his rules and regulations. So going back to Matthew 18 and 19, if you are following God's rules and regulations and you are praying with people who are doing the same, when you guys are praying or when you all are praying for something and agreeing upon it it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven it does not say maybe it does not say anything like that it says it shall be done and what connects you to God's promises your faith and obedience as long as you have that you are okay so I pray that this makes sense. It should really make sense. God bless.